Hi, it's Nora, and here's a question. What's the story with the Green New Deal? Cows farting. People quite like the Green New Deal, at least right now. This is serious. What's the actual policy behind the lofty ideas? Well, answering that question is a little harder than you'd think, but here we go. To start with, scientists now say that we, as humanity, only have until the year 2030 to stop catastrophic climate change. That sounds far away, but it's not. That deadline comes from an international report written by scientists under the direction of the United Nations. It says the planet will reach the crucial threshold of 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit above pre-industrial levels as early as 2030. That increases the risk for extreme drought, wildfires, floods and food shortages for hundreds of millions of people. It's not overstating it to say that climate change puts the lives of billions of people at risk. Experts agree that we as humanity really should have done something decades ago, but here we are. So what's the hot idea right now? The Green New Deal. It was already popular as a campaign promise among the more progressive candidates in the Democratic Party during midterms, but Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Ed Markey officially introduced the proposal as a joint resolution in Congress on February 7th. Today marks the dawn of a new era of climate action. When we look back today, this will be the moment. There's a lot to the Green New Deal in its current form. Its goal is to combat climate change and poverty at the same time through a program of massive public investment in renewable energy sources. It would create jobs while also focusing on the impact of climate change on the poor, people of color, and indigenous people. It touches on almost every facet of policymaking, environmental, education, labor, trade, housing, and many more. The idea is that you can't just focus on climate change, but have to do it within a larger social context. MSNBC's Chris Hayes asked that question to AOC using a fast food analogy. I think people see there's a little bit of like the combination Taco Bell Pizza Hut situation here. <laughs> it's like, it's cool they're together, but do they need to be together? They do. Like, <laughs> they do. To do all that though, would require the biggest role for the federal government since the original New Deal in the wake of the Great Depression. Rabbit hole. The original New Deal was a massive set of policies and programs put in place in the 1930s by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt to lift Americans out of the Great Depression. It too touched on almost every facet of policymaking. The federal government created jobs for people who needed them by starting and paying for programs for everything from building roads to photographing everyday Americans. It also included laws and regulations to shore up the economy, like establishing the Social Security Administration, reforming the American banking system, and passing laws to strengthen workers' ability to join unions, policies that were financed in part by the influx of tax money that came with the repeal of prohibition. Cheers. The Green New Deal borrows its expansiveness and ambition from its predecessor, and something else that seems to get lost in the conversation. It's not going to happen all at once. The original New Deal was actually dozens of individual laws passed over almost eight years, from 1933 to 1941. It wasn't a one-shot deal. Neither is that Green New Deal joint resolution. Resolution, not a bill. It's non-binding. It just means that we make it a national priority. And it says that the scope of, of the solution must be on the scale of the problem. That resolution, as AOC readily admits, was more of a mission statement, a set of goals, than a set of actual policies. While she's upfront about that, it's led to criticism, even from within her own party. The Green New Deal was a dream. It's not a deal. We are trying to ask you to vote yes on the Green New Deal. The government and is supposed to be for the people and by the people. You come in here and you say it has to be my way or the highway. I don't respond to that. And even Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi has been openly skeptical, though she has called the fight against climate change her flagship issue. In an interview with Politico on the day of the announcement, she said, the green dream, or whatever they call it, nobody knows what it is, but they're for it, right? And that's really one of the main criticisms here. What's the actual policy? While there isn't a Green New Deal policy proposal ready to go on the floor of the House today, there's plenty of ideas out there for how something like this could work. Let's get some context here, because newsflash, AOC did not invent the idea of a Green New Deal. One of the first uses of that actual term comes from the New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman in a 2007 column, which was expanded into a 2008 book. Rabbit hole. 
His policy proposal was to encourage private job creation in renewable energy by using government policies and incentives, rather than the government just creating the jobs like in the original New Deal. For example, the government could pass a law requiring all houses reach a certain level of energy efficiency. Then older homes would need to add insulation or solar panels. Homeowners would hire workers to do that installation, creating jobs. One law targets the environment and economic growth at the same time. The idea of an environmental labor alliance has been a longtime pillar of the Green Party, something they don't want you to forget. The Democrats themselves have borrowed from this idea, too, in huge ways. President Obama's 2009 stimulus package, the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, actually included more than $90 billion in clean energy investments and tax incentives. It poured money into developing clean energy infrastructure, offering incentives for American car makers to develop electric cars, and creating programs to make almost 800,000 homes more energy efficient. It's so similar to the Green New Deal that a few months ago, Politico called it Obama's Green New Deal. Once the GOP swept the 2010 midterms, though, that momentum mostly stopped. Which brings us back to this latest iteration of the Green New Deal, which actually includes a lot of similar ideas of a labor environmental partnership with government incentives. That includes building up the country's solar and wind energy infrastructure, which proponents say would create jobs in addition to creating renewable energy, though without specifics, it's hard to predict that. The question remains, who's paying for these programs? Is it individual taxpayers, like in the original New Deal and in Obama's green stimulus? One idea is to pay for it with a carbon emissions tax, which would fit into the goal of the Green New Deal to cut emissions, but it has huge opposition. That's a whole other facet of this that we don't even have time to get into. Once there is a specific Green New Deal policy ready for a vote, whether that's piecemeal legislation or a huge omnibus bill, industry lobbyists will likely spend enormous sums to try to defeat it. The politics behind the Green New Deal may be even more complicated than the policy, but that's a whole other video. The bottom line is that we, as the human race, not just as Americans, need to take climate change seriously. Calamity is upon us whether we like it or not and whether people believe in the science or not. Something needs to be done. We know when it needs to be done, soon. The what and how and how much will it cost questions are still unanswered. And that's probably more than you wanted to know. <laughs>